Good morning, greetings, friends, and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your health and vitality and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body. You are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health challenge. That is why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up, clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 30 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes and hypertension and obesity and skin diseases like acne, psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle, but what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is always a healing system, a regenerating system, a renewing system that is designed divinely to heal and regenerate itself on a moment-to-moment -moment basis, and while some folks may call that healing, renewing, regenerating system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health or nutrition or prescription drugs, we are here for you. We want to be your go-to resource for all things health and nutrition. Our number, 844-236-6010, 844-236-6010. I know we left some folks on hold yesterday. You're welcome to call back. We'll get you first up. Tell our call screener that we left you on hold, and we'll get you first up at 844-236-6010. If you have a success story you'd like to share, if you want to contribute to the conversation, or if you have questions about uh, formulations, ingredients, health challenges you or a loved one may be dealing with, 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. If you want to purchase any of our skin health products, truthtreatments.com is the place to go. Truth Balm, Truth Serum, Truth Omega-6 Healing Cream, and Truth Retinol 5% Gel. You want to start off with our Truth Serum, probably. That is my most uh, nutritionally dense product, nearly 80% vitamin C, a little bit of, uh, a little bit of extract from from uh, chamomile, a little bit from licorice, and then some cholesterol, touch of cholesterol. Cholesterol, as it turns out, is really good for your skin. Cholesterol is really good for a lot of things. It's super important stuff. We'll talk here about internal cholesterol here in a moment. But topically, cholesterol is involved in stimulating wound healing. It's a raw material for the production of moisture factors. And using cholesterol topically, in my opinion, is really underappreciated by skincare formulators and skincare companies. You'll find cholesterol in my a true serum as well as my truth omega-6 healing cream if you're dealing with fine lines wrinkles dark skin dry skin or i should say hyperpigmented or dark spots on your skin dry skin aging skin or if you just want a general skin health topical product you want to know about our truth treatment products head to truthtreatments.com truthtreatments.com okay we are talking about the connective tissue and the heart this is an underappreciated, underrecognized aspect of cardiovascular disease. That is the connective tissue role, the role connective tissue plays in heart disease. Heart disease is really about energy, as we were saying yesterday. And it begins with damage to the heart, especially to the connective tissue. The heart is as dependent as any other system on collagen, on elastin, on hyaluronic acid, on polysaccharides, that is sugars and proteoglycans, things like glucosamine and, and and, uh, and acetyl glucosamine. Heart disease can involve the musculature, it can involve the mechanics, it can involve chronically high blood pressure, it can uh, involve nutritional deficiencies, particularly uh, the B vitamins, vitamin C, electrolytes, all these nutrients, by the way, that you'll find in abundance in our Beyond Tangy Tangerine. It can involve sugar. Actually, sugar is probably the major cause of damage to the connective tissue. This is a very, very big problem. When we talk about uh, we beat up on sugar, and we do regularly, obviously, for good reason. One of the, the major problems with sugar is the reaction it has with connective tissue. It breaks down connective tissue. It so-called glycates connective tissue. Glycation uh, is the primary cause, well, one of the primary, one of the two primary causes, along with digestive toxicity, of all bodily breakdown, including the heart. 
these, uh, the, uh, these products, these, uh, these composites of sugar and connective tissue, the caramelized products, if you will, of the reaction between sugar and connective tissue are called glycated end products. We said this yesterday, advanced glycated end products. Scientists cleverly call them as an age because these are responsible for not just disease, but for the aging process in general. Reading from the April 26, 2012 edition of the World Journal of Cardiology, ages, AGEs, advanced glycosylated end products, products are believed to have a key role in the development of cardiovascular disease in patients with diabetes, but it's also true about patients who don't have diabetes. Uh, that's me. Continue on with the uh, quote here. The, uh, through the modifications of the structure and function and mechanical properties of tissues. That is, they caramelize, they destroy the tissues, specifically connective tissues. Remember, the cardiovascular system, the heart, the blood vessels that feed the heart, the blood vessels that oxygenate and detoxify the heart is composed like anything else in the body of cells and stuff. Remember our raisin bread model. We're made up of cells and stuff. Just like a, raisin, a loaf of raisin bread is made up of raisins and bread, the human body is made up of cells and stuff. The cells are the raisins, the stuff is the bread. Although if you're a scientist, you're not going to call it bread, you're going to call it the matrix. So you've got cells and stuff, cells and bread, cells and matrix. And the matrix, the bread, is made up mostly of collagen and goo. Now, obviously, I'm calling it goo. It's not really called goo. But that's what it is. It's goo. It's technically polysaccharides and proteoglycans, substances like glucosamine and hyaluronic acid, thus the importance of using these as supplements, by the way. Using glucosamine, using hyaluronic acid as supplements, using your glucogel caps, eating cartilage-containing products, using my bone broth protein, which you can find at brightsidehealth.com, all gives you the raw material for making this goo. And the more goo we have, or the healthier our goo is, the stronger and more vital our, glue, our goo is, the more facility, nutrition, and oxygen we'll have at flowing through and feeding the cells. The goo feeds the cells. The goo detoxifies the cells, like a big circle. The cells make the goo, and the goo feeds the cells, like a big circle. The take-home message here is heart disease is the end result of damage to this goo, damage to the matrix, damage to the collagen, clogging up of the extracellular matrix, the ECM is how they call it. And to pin the blame on cholesterol is so stupid. It is so biochemically simple-minded and ignorant. While you know, it, it, we can be forgiven as average people, as lay people who aren't biochemists or aren't clinicians or haven't gone to medical school, we can be forgiven if we buy into this meme, this, this slogan, this, this shibboleth, this silly notion, this simplistic notion that uh, cholesterol causes heart disease. Okay, We're not taught any different, and we're not in, we didn't study the human body. So we could be forgiven. But for a cardiologist or for for a, a statin prescribing, ablation recommending, heart bypassing doctor to fall into this idea that cholesterol causes heart disease and won't just stop cholesterol production and you'll be all good. This is just so stupid. And it is so biochemically ignorant. And even worse, it's unfair because they should know better. Your cardiologist should know better. You shouldn't have to listen to a pharmacist on the radio telling you the logic of how your heart breaks down and how it has nothing to do with the cholesterol that's secreted out of your cells, although cholesterol is in the, is in the, uh, is in the area. It's in the lesion. It's in the plaque, certainly. But it's there for a reason. Heart disease is the result of broken down tissue, period. Not cholesterol. That's boneheaded and idiotic once you understand how this thing works. Heart disease is the result of broken down collagen and stiff goo, stiff hardened matrix. Once the matrix become, becomes hardened and fibrotic, fibers form in the, in the matrix and the collagen becomes damaged, guess what happens? The body being brilliant, the divine force being perfect, patches it up with cholesterol and calcium and lipoproteins and all the stuff that we call plaque. And then your doctor says, well, you've got plaque. You've got, you've got uh, uh, atherosclerosis. So we just have to stop your body from making cholesterol because that'll take care of the problem. Stupid, stupid, stupid. Excuse me. I didn't mean to get all upset here this morning. Anyway, we've got more good health information. Talk to you about coenzyme Q10 when we come back and, uh, and uh, give you some more nutritional strategies for dealing with heart disease. 844-236-1610 is our number. We'll be back on the bright side right after this. Okay. All right, we're back on the bright 
health side. I'm pharmacist Ben. 844-236-6010 is our number. If you have questions about health, nutrition, prescription drugs, the longevity products, the ones I take and the ones I recommend. So I'm sipping on my Beyond Tangy Tangerine as we speak. If you have questions about uh, any of the longevity formulations or ingredients or the business... Or if you have a success story you'd like to share, 844-236-6010 is your number on the bright side. If we left you on hold yesterday, please call back if you like, and we'll get you first up. Tell our call screener, and we'll get you first up. If you want to purchase any of the Longevity products you hear advertiser recommended on the program, you can head to my websites, brightsideben.com, criticalhealthnews.com, or pharmacistben.com. You can also call 866-735-2470, 866-735-2470, and... Uh, you can order products. Uh, you can just order products right on the phone, or you can sign up to join the Brightside Ben team on the phone as well. Love to have you on my team. I'm looking for business builders, people who are business uh, entrepreneurially minded, business minded, and who love health and who want to change people's lives for the better with good nutritional supplementation, with lifestyle changes, with education. That's what really longevity is all about, making lives better. If you're interested, and you want to make some money as well, and you're business-minded, please call 866-735-2470 and tell them you want to join the Brightside Ben team. Or you can uh, sign up right off the website, brightsideben.com, criticalhealthnews.com, and pharmacistben.com. Okay, so uh, heart disease is a, in many ways, it's a connective tissue disease, it's a tissue disease, it's a breakdown disease. This should not come as a surprise. This is how aging and disease occurs. It's not about stopping the body from making things. This is just crazy. This is, it, in a hundred years, when they look back on how your doctor treated you to, for, for heart disease, first they're going to laugh and then they're going to cry because they'll know that people are dying. People are suffering needlessly because of this pharmacomedical model that is completely oblivious to the mechanisms of how the body breaks down. But you know, if you've just been listening to this program for the last 20 minutes, let alone for, for the last four or five years that we've been talking about these ideas, you know that the body breaks down in a generic fashion and it doesn't matter where it occurs. So when we say cardiovascular disease is the result of of a breakdown of degeneration and deterioration, this just falls in line with how all disease shows up. So heart disease is the result of broken down collagen, stiff, stiff matrix, stiff goo. And once this, the goo becomes stiff and fibrotic, that is filled with fibers as an attempt for, uh, as an attempt to repair things. Once this happens, nutritional deficiencies ensue, oxygen deficiencies ensue, stress hormones become involved. This can be compounded by sugar. This is compounded by chemical toxicity, including chlorine and fluoride, which we're all ingesting way too much of. This guy named uh, Joseph Price wrote a book back in the 60s, I believe, 60s or 70s, a long time ago, uh, called Coronaries, Cholesterol, and Chlorine, 1969. He wrote this book, cute little book, really neat. You know, books cost, this, this thing costs $1.95. Uh, it's about, it's a little, really easy to read book. Dr. Joseph Price, he's an MD. Uh, the book is called Coronaries, Cholesterol, and Chlorine. He concludes in the book that the basic cause of atherosclerosis and heart attacks and stroke is chlorine. Now, I don't know if I'd go that far, but certainly chlorine is not a good thing. Not that we, you know, don't need chlorine, perhaps, although these days you can use ozone and ultraviolet. There's got to be better ways to purify the water than ingesting chlorine. We, uh, Dr. Price wrote about an experiment that he performed on two groups of chickens. One group was given chlorinated water. The other group was given non-chlorinated water. And according to Dr. Price writing in the book, all the chickens in the group raised with chlorine, all the, chicken, uh, uh, all the chlorine drinking chickens showed some level of heart or blood vessel disease, while the group that didn't drink the chlorine water had no incidence of disease. The group with the, that drank the chlorinated water demonstrated signs of poor circulation, shivering, drooping feathers. They were less active. Active, and the group without the chlorine grew faster, they were stronger, they were larger, and they manifested more vigor and more good health. Fluoride, too, has been associated with heart disease, and these are things that we ingest on a regular basis. So whether we're talking chlorine, whether we're talking fluoride, whether we're talking deficiencies in zinc or selenium or vitamin C or vitamin A or B-complex, among other nutrients, and all of these are very common, all these deficiencies... Whether we're talking poor oxygenation caused by poor breathing techniques or caused by poor inflammation or caused by inflammation, as can occur with digestive toxicity, gluten intolerance, leaky gut, any way you look at it, folks, any way you look at it, heart disease is the result of a broken down matrix 
a broken down connective tissue matrix in the heart. And nobody ever talks about this connective tissue and connective tissue matrix in the heart, despite the fact that heart disease is the leading killer, heart disease is the leading cause of misery, heart disease costs us hundreds of billions of dollars in healthcare costs. So it's a matrix problem. Matrix, by the way, means mother. And the matrix is what feeds and oxygenates and detoxifies and regulates the growth of cells, just like, just like a mother. I'm not, I mean, literally, it means mother in Latin. Matrix means mother. And ultimately, that means dead heart cells, and ultimately, that means heart disease. Now, once the heart becomes damaged, that's really when we're off to the heart disease races. Once the heart becomes damaged, the circulation starts to suffer. When the heart's damaged, the body has compensatory mechanisms that will help change the blood flow. When the heart's damaged, the pressure will drop, the blood flow won't be as effective, so the body will start to compensate. And one of the ways it compensates is by changing the pressure, by secreting chemicals that raise the pressure because the tissues aren't getting oxygenated because the heart's damaged. The kidneys will start to secrete hormones. This will cause sodium to be retained. The body will try to raise the volume of the blood. This is why sodium retention occurs. The adrenal glands will secrete hormones. And by the way, it's not a question of eating too much sodium. That's more simple-minded doctor nonsense. It has to do with the kidneys compensating for poor blood flow. The adrenal glands will secrete cortisol and adrenaline. That will also raise the blood pressure. The heart may enlarge cardiomyopathy, heart, uh, I'm sorry, uh, cardiohypertrophy. The, the heart will enlarge, it will fill up with more blood so it can pump harder. All of these mechanisms will cause further damage and further stress to the heart. And then you get, of course, more compensation from the kidneys, more compensation from the adrenal glands. The heart will get further enlarged. And you see this, this classic vicious downward spiral of disease. Damage leads to compensation, leads to more damage, leads to compensation. This is so important because it puts the control of our health back in our laps and away from the authorities who say, well, you need a bypass. You need surgical intervention. You need a stent. You need a, you need a prescription drug. You need a beta blocker. This is what they want us to think. Now, I don't know. I'm not going to go as far as to say your individual doctor is some nefarious, evil person. He's not. I know doctors. They're nice people. It's the model. The model is anti-human being. As all institutions, as we've said so many times, it's the institution versus the individual. And I don't care who is leading the institution, by the way. That's why voting is so st nonsensical, except perhaps local voting. The institution is always pitted against the individual, whether it's a government institution, a legal institution, or a medical institution. It's always them against us. And our power comes from, from understanding. Otherwise, we're just going to be just like sheep led to slaughter. Oh, what, do, what drug do I take? Oh, what surgery do I need? Okay, I guess I'll have a bypass. I, I guess you can run an electrical current through my heart. I guess that's, that'll help. Yeah, I, I guess I'll take a beta blocker. Because we don't understand what's going on, the mechanisms here. And that's what a doctor should be teaching us, by the way. Doctor means teacher at the end of the day. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben. 844-236-6010 is our number. We'll be back right after this. All right, we are back on the bright side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Thanks for joining us. 844-236-6010 is our number. We're on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific and 10 to 11 Central Time, 24-7 on our archive pages at brightsideben.com and pharmacistben.com. And... Uh, you can also purchase Longevity products off the websites as well, and you can sign up to join the Brightside Ben team off the websites. If you like what you hear on this program, if you want to help change the world too, if you want to help me in my mission to change the world via nutrition and health and understanding how the human body works, and you like business, and you like being an entrepreneur, and you want to make some money, and you don't like working for the man, punching a clock... You want to know about the Longevity business as well as the Longevity products, call 866-735-2470, 866-735-2470. And our number today, 844-236-6010. We'll get your calls here in just a moment, so hang tight. A couple things. Uh, well, let's see here. Got an ad today. I get these ads from a uh, uh, medical textbook company. I get ads once, a, once in a while when they have new books. And this one is an ad for a book called The Compendium of Inflammatory Diseases. 
It's an encyclopedia of all the inflammatory diseases. And I just cracked up when I saw it because all diseases are inflammatory. Inflammation is the only disease. Not that it's, it's not a disease really, but inflammation is the only cause of breakdown. This is really important because inflammation is a protective response. Work with me here, okay? The, the most popular drugs in the world are anti-inflammatory medicines, and it will be very easy for us to think, and it, we're told this, that inflammation is bad. Inflammation is a bad guy. Inflammation has to be suppressed. We need to take anti-inflammatory drugs. We need to keep inflammation at bay. This is not correct. This is more bad medical dogma. Information, inflammation is your friend, and you don't want to suppress it. You want to figure out why it's there. Inflammation is a defensive response. All diseases are inflammatory diseases, folks. That means all diseases are defensive responses. That means all diseases are the manifestation of the body trying to protect itself and us. That means that you don't want to stop the inflammation. You want to figure out why it's there. And you know why it's there? It's simple. Nutritional deficiencies. Lack of oxygen. Accumulation of toxicity. Those are the only things. Cellular starvation, suffocation, and toxification leads to inflammation, leads to more starvation, suffocation, and toxification. Folks, if you turn the radio off right now, if you never listen to me again, you've got disease in a nutshell. If you understand this, starvation, that is nutritional deficiencies, not caloric deficiencies. We have plenty of those. Nutritional deficiencies, micronutrients specifically. Lack of oxygen not just at the breathing level, but also at the cell level. And that's where uh, inflammation becomes a vicious spiral because inflammation can cause a lack of oxygen at the cell level and a lack of oxygen at the cell level can cause inflammation. Do you know when cells die, they initiate an, an inflammatory response? When cells die, they release uric acid. They release calcium. And your dummy doctor will say, don't take calcium supplements or we need to control your uric acid. Completely oblivious to the fact that these are death chemicals, cellular death chemicals. They're the signs that cells are dying. They're not a sign that you want to suppress these things, suppress uric acid, or that you want to be on a purine-free diet. That's what they tell you. More nonsense. There is so much nonsense on the, in the medical world. So much. All right, I'm pharmacist Ben. 844-236-6010 is our number. Let us go to Elaine in Alaska. Good morning, Elaine. How you doing? Hey, good morning. Thank you for taking my call, and thank you for all your great advice. Thank um, you. Yeah, hey, I'm the physical therapist up here. In oh, Europe. yes. Hi. Yeah, hey, we got some beautiful snow up here, so it's very nice. Did you uh, send me a note? Did you send me an email? Um, I was uh, inquiring about the um, skin products, because I've, okay. I've got lupus and I remember I think did I answer yeah. you I, I read it I don't remember if I answered you or not I or not so but that's okay I'm, you I'm, give me a couple I'm, it takes me a, sometimes it takes me a few days but I did I remember reading your note so what's going on how can I help you um, yeah I'm doing a courtesy call for one of my patients um, she's got uh, two questions um, she's been through every single test in Mayo Clinic and poked and prodded basically they gave her a diagnosis of gastroparesis okay and you her, want some help with that? Yeah, her question, um, she specifically asked, um, is it progressive or are, is there something she can do to reverse? Yes, it's a food issue. She's got to watch for food. She's got to look for problem foods. Gastroparesis for the listeners is when your stomach doesn't pump, the food sits in your stomach. It doesn't move it out of the stomach. So you want to look at why the digestive system is sluggish and it usually has to do with some kind of food. Okay, so see if she can link it to specific foods. That's number one. And then number two, she wants to do everything she could do for the digestive system to support digestive health. Probiotics, the nightly essence, apple cider vinegar, um, uh, digestive enzymes, the ultimate enzymes with all of her meals, food diary and elimination diet, that goes without saying, uh, uh, fasting, the Swero V cleanse. She wants to consider it to be a, a, a problem with foods, number one. And then number two, it could have something to do with an, ex, uh, an exaggerated stress response. Now, that'll also be linked to foods, but there may be other reasons why she has this exaggerated stress response. Usually people don't have just gastroparesis, so look for other symptoms. This idea of looking for other symptoms is critical. It's, I call it, well, it's called triangulation, where you get multiple points that is multiple symptoms, points being symptoms, and you form a picture of what's happening in the body. Gastroparesis is just one point that doesn't really tell us what's happening in the body, although usually it has something to do with foods. So that's the first place to look. But I'd be looking for other symptoms so we could get a picture of what's going on and then, uh, and then do all the digestive stuff, all the digestive support, including food diary, elimination diet, and, and fasting, and Swero V cleanse, and the probiotics. Okay. okay. And 
Her her doctor. Um, she put, they can't do Zippo for it. There's nothing yeah, the doctor can do. They, he wants to put her on, it's called Don Peridon. Don Peridon, isn't that a champagne or something? Uh, uh, Don Perignon. <laughs> oh, okay. I don't know what uh, Don Peridon. Don Peridon. Don Peridon, D-O-N-P-E-R-A-D-O-N. Don, that's, oh, that's a brand name, Don Peridon. Oh, no, Don Peridon. Okay, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, uh, Don Peridon is a, uh, it's, uh, works with neurochemicals with uh, the nervous system, basically. It's used to treat nausea. Uh, and it will increase the movements, the force of the stomach to move. See, this is the idea, Elaine, and you can relate to this, I'm sure, being a healthcare professional. He's going to force the body to move, force the digestive tract to contract, digestive tract or the stomach to contract. It's going to force the, the stomach to move. Now, if the stomach says, I don't want to move, you don't want to force it to move. This is, this is craziness. This is a recipe for disaster. You do not force the stomach to move. You don't force anything. The stomach doesn't want to move. It doesn't want to move. You've got to figure out why, not force it to move. You follow me? Yes. And I don't even know. Uh, Dom Peridone, they, I don't, I'm not even sure. I'm not even sure if that's an official drug, if that's if available. Well, may, I guess it must be if... Uh, it's out of Canada. It's out, oh, it's out of Canada. Yeah, I don't, th I don't think you can get it here. Uh, but it's a, it's a drug that works with the neurology of the digestive tract, and that's never a good idea to force the body to do what do it does not want to do. And that's just, you know, that's just common sense. All right, Elaine? Thank you. Hey, have you ever um, thought about writing a book? I'm writing one as we speak, and Very it's nice. a lot harder <laughs> writing a book, and I have a lot to say, but it's just, I've got two editors, I've got, I've been writing, it, it, you know, it's just a project, but thank you for the suggestion, I appreciate that, hopefully you'll buy All right. it. All right, I will. All right. Okay, Elaine, take care, bye-bye. All right, let's go to Georgia, and welcome Don to the bright side. What's up, Don? Hey, Ben, how you doing? Uh, I'm good, but you know what, that's the music. Uh, what were we going to ask okay. real quick? Uh, I was going to ask about uh, geographic tongue, and I'll hold you after the break. Okay, good. Geographic tongue. Hang on. Uh, we'll get to you when we come back from our break. If you're on hold, hang tight. We'll get to you as well. 844-236-6010 is our number. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. On the bright side, I farm. This is Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. Uh, let's see here. Protein supplement may cut risk of heart disease and stroke. This is from the UK. Drinking a whey protein supplement, uh, University of Reading in the UK. Drinking a whey protein supplement, such as the kind you'll find in our Slender FX and Keto FX. Study participants with mild hypertension had an estimated 8% reduction in risk of heart disease and stroke. The study found those taking the supplement, whey protein that is, had lower blood pressure, lower cholesterol, and healthier blood vessels. Makes perfect sense when you understand that when you do whey protein, you're getting the building blocks for building connective tissue and strengthening the heart. Whey protein rocks. If you don't have a milk allergy, or sometimes folks will have an allergic reaction to whey. Um, not always, though. You may be able to do whey even if you have a dairy allergy. A lot of the, a lot of the allergenic components are taken out when, when whey is made, although you can still have a problem with whey. Some people do. But if you don't, it is the protein of choice, along with egg. Egg and whey protein are the two most important proteins, and a case could be made for either one, although whey protein tends to be more available, bioavailable to the body. They're both very, very important sources of protein. How ironic is it that eggs are incredibly valuable for the heart, the yolk, that is, egg yolks for your heart. Yes, egg yolks are incredibly important for heart health, despite what you hear, although I must admit people are not saying that as much. All right, 844-236-6010, we're talking to Don in Georgia. Don, geographic tongue, are you there, sir? Yes. What is it? Why do you get it? And why okay. do you take it away? I, I love that question, and I'll tell you why I love that in a second here. Is it for you or somebody you know, or are you just curious? For me. Okay, good. All right. So that's a great question because you look at the tongue, and but for the listeners, geographic tongue is basically when you have a film on top of the tongue or uh, it's inflamed a little bit perhaps. So how does your show up, Don? Like, uh, like a map. Like a map, right. That's why they call it yeah. geographic tongue. Here's the thing. Yeah. It, it, this is why I think this is fascinating. Because you look at the tongue, right, and you're like, what the heck is wrong with my tongue? It's just in my mouth. What could I have, what could I have done to my tongue, right? Isn't there this idea that, like, how could your tongue get hurt? It, it, isn't right. that what you th That's kind of what you think, right? Like, how can anything right. wrong with my tongue? And the reason this is important is because we don't see the body as a unit, 
as a homogenous whole. A geographic tongue, Don, is a tongue rash, like a skin rash on your tongue. You understand mm. what I'm saying? It's a skin mm -hmm. rash on the tongue. And because the tongue is made up of weird tissue, not weird, but unusual tissue, it has unusual shape or unusual uh, uh, texture, unusual appearance. But it's just a rash. It's a rash on the tongue, period. And they call it geographic tongue, and they'll, you know, you'll have all special remedies, and you'll have special doctors. I bet your doctor doesn't know what the heck to do. Probably, it's uh, uh, some people call it tongue psoriasis. You know, they associate with fungal infections. It's a rash on the tongue, and just like when you have a rash on the skin, the first thing you look for is something that's getting into the blood, that's activating the immune system. If you call me up and said I have this rash on my thigh or my rash on my leg, a rash on my leg, I would say, look, Don, when you have rashes on the skin, that's the manifestation of toxicity that's getting into the blood so you got to look to food same thing here don okay mm. the geographic tongue is like a skin rash but it's showing up on your tongue and it just looks weird because the tongue is is unusual compared to the rest of the other stuff in the body compared to your regular skin so look to digestive issues do a food diary or do a, a fast for a couple of days or swear be cleanse do a food diary and then eliminate foods now look don you sound like you're in your 40s right how am i mm -hmm. close okay good so you know, you're an adult, and you've been around the block for four decades. You know you got something going on in your digestive system, okay? you got to know it. I'm not psychic, Ben. I'm not sitting here giving you a Miss Cleo reading over the air. I'm telling you how the body works. You follow me? And I'm not going to charge you either. And no boneheaded doctor should ever charge you for telling you something like that. He's not even going to tell you that. He's not going to know what to do. Look to the digestive system. Something's getting into the blood. It's causing an activation of the immune system, and it's showing up in your tongue. All right? And you should be yeah. able to take care of that really quickly. In fact, if you just stopped eating for two or three days, you'll notice a, a, a mitigation of the symptoms. And then once you start eliminating foods and correcting your digestive, di digestive problems, not only will you get rid of your geographic tongue, but you're going to live longer and reduce your risk of other horrible health challenges. All right? Got it. Take care, brother. Have a good day. Thank you. Good to talk to you, Don. All right. All right. Candy in Wisconsin. Good morning. What's going on? Candy, Hi Candy. There. It's just Hi. Candy, yes. Hey, um, Candy. I just wanted to call and give an update and also ask you a question all in sure. one. Sure. Um, so, you know, I started your protocol for ketogenic and low carb um, February 12th. I, th and I think I remember. Rem remind me, you were the gal who said that you were not in ketosis or you were in ketosis. This was no, a I was. I was in ketosis and I still am. Um, but what it is, is, I overcame Crohn's disease, is the big thing. Oh, Crohn's? Without... You overcame Crohn's? Yes. Awesome. Yeah. How did you do that? Um, well, by studying and, and everything you've said, I've applied. Um, and so, so that's. That's, and I've never used any any of the drugs that they offered for Crohn's. Um, oh, you I healed yourself for Crohn's. Candy, do not underestimate this. This is huge. Yeah, everybody oh, listening. You know how huge yeah, this is. Yeah, it is. That's you healed yourself another... of Crohn's disease without a doctor just by using things you heard on this program and, your, and doing your research. Correct. And so I'm giving you another update because I started out at 199 pounds February 12th. I went on, on the ketogenic diet. And I am down to 148. So That's awesome. Pounds. That's awesome, Candy. That is so, so friggin' cool. Hey, send me send me an email with your address. I'm going to send you a freebie on Tangy Tangerine on me, cause, just because you okay, made me happy. Okay, I, I, so here's my question, because yeah. doing this process now, I've found that eating one meal a day suits me best. For That's the, my all height. you need, and you can even skip um, days. That's great. Yeah, so, so my question is, what is the best time for the... You know, to eat. Should I eat? If you eat day? in the middle of the day, you'll maximize ketosis. Okay. If you eat, you okay. want to try to have as much time without eating as possible. So if you eat in the middle of the day, you'll have all when you're sleeping and all the, the ne beginning of the next day to be in ketosis. Yeah, because like between. I, I guess it doesn't really four. matter as I'm sitting here thinking. It doesn't really matter. If you're only doing one meal a day, it doesn't matter. You want to just maximize the not eating. And it does, if you're only doing one meal a day, it won't really matter. Uh, probably best to. Like, probably not in the morning. Food. Not yeah, in the morning. two to four yeah. is like my yeah. window yeah. where I'm where I'm been eating. So. Yeah, experiment, experiment where you're at. I find that if I eat in the morning, I get tired. Okay, okay. All right. All right. Well, thank you so much. Ben, thank for you. God bless you. Today. Send me an email with your address, and I'm going to put a BTT out in the mail to you next week. And uh, thank you so much for sharing that. I appreciate it. Thanks, Ben. Bye bye. Okay. Bye, Candy. All right, uh, Carl, the Truth Raider. What is going on, brother? Long time no talk to. Yes, sir. 
The Dr. You, ben, my humanitarian friend. Good morning. Thank you, Carl, the Truth Raider. It takes one to know one, though. It takes one to know one. <laughs> Don't forget. Well, I'm working very hard. I think I, I'm still I, a little bit You become much that. more positive in the years that I've been talking to you. You Absolutely. were a negative Nelly when I first met you. Oh, yeah. Well, the, the life will do that to you very easily. <laughs> Don't let it beat you up. Don't let it beat you up. What's going I'm on? Catching How can up. I I'm probably a, probably a yard or two behind you, but I'll catch up one of these days. Okay, good. What's, <laughs> what's going okay, on? Okay, two things. Two yes, things sir. today. Junk nascent iodine. Junk? Yes. How, tell me about it. Tell, they tell are what using it into some fast foods in uh, some of the states, for example, in the tortillas, for example. If nascent you know iodine about. is being put into food? Yes. Cause, uh, Why is, I, what's the purpose of that? Time to time after I made contact, as I told you a few years ago, I, I had to do research to figure it out. I have this like iodine stain on my hand, like a little brown blotch on my hand you know, from something, something that's smeared on my hand. And uh, I did research on it, and that, that tends what they're doing is in the salt that they use, it has some forms of kind of like a junk iodine in it or, or a nascent iodine that's contained in the food. Hmm. So they're yeah. not inject. They're, are you saying they're injecting the nascent iodine in the food? They they, they cook it. They make it in the in the process at the. What does it plant, do though? In the, in Why the would they do that? Uh, I guess that's that's kind of spawned off where. Uh, where Morton, uh, you know, salt, table salt, they used to do put iodine. Are you saying in to keep? That. Are you saying to, to like iodize the public so that they don't get goiter? Is that the idea? Is that what yeah, you're saying? Could, could oh, like be, iodized it salt. Could uses, it could also be used as an maybe an, an excitotoxin replacement along with MSG to get people to keep keep coming mm. back and and buying the food. And you know this for a fact that a food <laughs> is being in, 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 injected with nascent iodine. Oh yeah, you know this for I, get, fact. I, I get the iodine, I get the iodine spots on my hand. Okay, well, I have not heard. I have not. I have not heard that. I'm going to have to look into that. I'm going to have to look into that. Now, you were talking about heart health. That's the other point I wanted to talk about. I am so upset with Jerry. (laughs) Jerry, who? (laughs) Mister, Mister, all time, Mister Clutch, Mister Basketball. Who are you talking about? He's doing cheap advertisements for his Darelto. Oh, you're talking about a commercial. Oh, you're talking about Jerry West. Hey, listen, I want I want to talk to you, but we got the program's done. So call me on Monday. I want we'll talk about that. Okay. Okay. All right, buddy. Thank you. Have a good weekend, man. All right. That's all the time we have for today on The Bright Side. Please check out my Truth Skin Health products, connective tissue building products, retinol and vitamin C rich without preservatives, without fragrances, without waxes, water, oil, silicon, or anything your skin doesn't need or doesn't want. TruthTreatments.com. TruthTreatments.com. And then uh, also make sure you check out our Yongevity products at at uh, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. All right, we'll talk to you on Monday. Have yourselves a wonderful, beautiful, spectacular day. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Bye for now.